What's up? Mm. Mm. We're going to start that one again. What's up, tribe? This is your Friday night roundup. Let me tell y'all something. I had me a ball in Seattle, Washington, right? Got to hang out with my nephew, who I have not seen. Well, I haven't seen him since last Thanksgiving. But before that, I hadn't seen him in about four years. For various reasons. And... It was good to see him and his wife. I met his wife before. Um, before they were husband and wife. They got married. And um, this was my first time meeting her side of the family. So it was really cool to you know meet new family and hang out with new family. I'd never been to Seattle, Washington before. I love to travel, but Seattle is a place I'd never been. So that was great. The weather was horrible. But the, weather's here, but the weather here has been horrible. So what you gonna do, right? Ain't no monkey gonna stop that show. <laughs> but I say all that to say, I have been exhausted since I've been back. I overslept for work this morning. I don't ever oversleep for work. Matter of fact, I usually leave so early or get up in the morning so early to get to work that even though I overslept this morning, I still got to work on time. Like, <laughs> I called and was like, yeah, I'm going to be, well, technically it wasn't on time, but we get a 15-minute grace. So I was there within the 15-minute grace. But I called and told them I was running late, you know. And, I, and then when I walked in, they were like, I said, look, I don't know. You know. But anyway, that's just a little glimpse of my life, my world. Uh, Friday Night Roundup. A couple of things I want to touch on. First of all, I want to give a hearty, hearty, hearty shout out to all of my fathers. It is Father's Day weekend. And even though people complain, especially fathers complain that it is an overlooked holiday, that they don't get the same thing that mothers get. And I agree. I don't, it's not the same fanfare for Father's Day as it is for Mother's Day. That is totally true. Uh, but for me to you, all of my subbies that are fathers all of my subbies who had great fathers or are married to great fathers i just want to extend a happy father's day to you guys it is not an easy job and i want to give a special special shout out to all my single fathers who are doing it all by themselves right because we always shout out to single mothers so it's a lot of single fathers out there that are doing it by themselves too <sighs> i just came back from shopping for my dad for father's day i don't never know to get that dude I don't, because he's spoiled. He's spoiled. He don't need nothing, you know. I'm just going to, um, I bought him some stuff from Polo, and then I'm just going to take him some crabs on on Sunday, and we're going to have some crabs, because I can't go wrong with crabs with my dad. I can't go wrong with crabs for me. It's a win-win for me. Y'all let me know what y'all going to drop them comments. Let me know what y'all going to do for y'all fathers. But let's drop into some of these um, topics of the week. So first things first, let's talk a little Housewives of Atlanta. We got a peach in, a peach out, a question mark. And unfortunately, we have a, uh, a horrible diagnosis. So I'll start with the bad so I can end with the silly. Uh, Greg, Nene Leak's husband, Greg Leak's has been diagnosed with cancer. And even though I have not seen her be specific about what type of cancer, she said it's not prostate cancer, but I don't. I haven't seen a post where she's been specific about what type of cancer, but it really doesn't matter. Cancer is cancer. Cancer is, um, the big thing about cancer is early detection. And she, she did allude to, well, she didn't allude to, she said that Greg doesn't like going to the doctors, which most men do not. Most men do not like going to the doctor. And we know that Greg has had some health issues, um, for the last year, even on the show, we saw where he went in the hospital. He was having some chest palpitations and things of that nature. So I just want to send prayers and well wishes to um, Nene and her family. She said that the support has been overwhelming and she's just very grateful. And so we're just going to pray our, ways th our way through that because, you know, I always say when reality meets the real, and this is a reality meets the real. You know what I'm saying? It's not no storyline. It's not no plot. But let's talk about the silly. No. No, not the silly. Candy has gotten Candy Coated Nights picked up by VH1. If you have been a follower of Candy for a while or um, a fan of Candy for a while, you know she used to do Candy Coated Nights. She used to do it um, on her, um, from her her, her um, store that she has down in Atlanta before, before she um, started the Candy Factory, before she built that Candy Factory, or at least to my knowledge. I, I wasn't, 
as big of a YouTuber back then as I am now. And so I never really found the show on a consistent basis. I honestly couldn't tell you what platform. I don't remember if it was a podcast or if it was YouTube. I honestly don't remember. But what I do remember, the few episodes that I saw, it was basically a, a, a chit-chat girls talk. Sometimes guys talk. Um, where they sit around and they just talk about naughty things and taboo topics and not always sex, but, you know, just the things that you wouldn't normally talk about. Because it is going to be on a network show, I don't know how watered down it's going to be per se. But, you know, Candy keep a coin, okay? <laughs> Candy keeps a coin. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, um, a story was out there that Candy was actually producing or putting together a show for Marlo Hampton on... The on uh, We TV, which you know, We TV has the growing up hip hop franchise, the Braxton franchise, um, celebrity boot camp, like those shows come on We TV. And supposedly, Marlo Hampton was gonna get a show there called um, Hot Atlanta, but hot spell H A U T E, like like Hulk Couture. And it was it was nixed, and then now we're hearing that <laughs> Candy getting another show on VH1. So was that a real show she was trying to put together for Marlo, or was it a bargaining trip, be- bargaining chip? Because what we found out is Marlo Hampton got a peach. I never thought I'd see today. Uh, James Caldwell, we we were in agreement. If you follow James Caldwell, you know what I'm talking about. James Caldwell, we were in agreement that we didn't think that Marlo would ever get a peach because Marlo, there's a high liability with Marlo. There are a lot of question marks in her past. Hell, there's a lot of question marks in her present. And I just I just never thought they would do it. But they did. She's, she, so the, the, what's being reported, that she has a peach. And Kenya is being reduced to a friend of the show. Furthermore, if Kenya were not pregnant, she wouldn't even be that. She'd be gone altogether. Basically, her relationship with the show soured after last year with the whole getting married but don't want my husband on the show type situation. And... You know, she purposely got married when the camp, like when she wasn't filming the show, so they didn't get any footage of it. That's probably the reason why she didn't invite none of the people from the show there, right? Because um, remember the big thing on the show last year was that Cynthia wasn't invited, but other people were invited. And they were like, damn, if Cynthia is your girl, not only did you not tell Cynthia, but you didn't invite Cynthia. But I think that had a lot to do with her not wanting the show to know what was going on in production to have anything to do with it. And then... Her husband didn't want to be on the show. So, and then badmouth the show, right? He did interviews where he was just talking about how it just wasn't a great representation of black women and so forth and so on. So, I think that had a lot to do with um, Kenya's demotion. Kanye, what? Okay, y'all. Kanye West, y'all. I thought we was mad at Kanye. I thought we had uninvited Kanye to the barbecue. How the fuck did his album debut at number one? Who buying Kanye's album? Who bought his album? Did you buy it? Did you buy it? I ain't buy it. I ain't heard it. I don't know nothing about it. I probably never hear it. Because I really don't listen to regular radio anymore. So if it's being played on like mainstream radio or whatever, I'll never hear it. Because I listen to my... XM radio and my podcast and my books on tape. I'm a nerd like that, okay? I listen to my morning Joe in the morning on my way to work. I listen to my podcast and my books and stuff. So I, when I do listen to music, I listen to XM, but I listen to like backspin, like the old hip hop. So, but I just want to know who bought his album. Because I thought we was mad at him, but clearly... Y'all have some short memories, cause y'all y'all ain't mad that he said y'all wanted to be slaves or how you interpret it. Y'all ain't mad about nothing. Y'all ain't mad that he a Trump supporter and he said that he feel like him and Trump have a lot in common and they kindred spirits. Y'all ain't mad about that no more, huh? And let me be clear, I'm not saying that just because he's a Trump supporter we should not support him. I ain't saying that. I'm just saying that Kanye has made a lot of crazy statements over the last maybe two years. So if you add all of them statements up, it equals you not getting my coin. But anyway, Oprah's done a bit a deal with Apple to produce new content. Now, I have a few questions about that. Oprah, you got a damn network. So I don't understand and again, Oprah another one, keep a coin. I ain't mad at you. 
I ain't mad at you with your coin. I'm just trying to figure out how that connects. You have the own network, which has original programming. And you have room to add some new programming because, first of all, what you need to do, you, Sweetie Pies ain't coming back, so that's a show. You need to get rid of all the Tyler Perry shows. You just need to get rid of all of them shits. The have the have nots, the re the reboot of uh, the pains. Um, I think better or worse is off. If loving you is wrong, all them shits can go, and then you have all the room you need for some original content. But you have teamed up with Apple, and again, I'm not mad at you. Get your coin. I am just trying to figure out what how you're going to prioritize what you're going to put on your network versus what you're going to put on Apple because. You have Super Soul Sunday. Now, she stopped doing Next Best Thing or something like that, which I thought it was it was sort of like a it was sort of like a one-on-one Oprah show because she would do interviews with these celebrities, and I remember her doing an interview with Kevin Hart. I remember her, you know, different people. And then she has Masterclass, which I love. I love that as well. So I think she has some really great content that, I don't know. I'm happy for you, though, Oprah. Keep your coin, boo. I have I have Apple products, so when it come out, I'm sure it'll be on the Apple Music where you got to pay extra for or the Apple, however it is, the stream, whatever. I'm sure they're going to get an extra $12.99 out of me a month because, you know, I'm going to see Mama O. I, at, least, at least I'm going to check it out for the first month, see what she's talking about. Mama O going to get me. She's going to get something from me. There's also an exhibit. Um, Oprah just has um, an exhibit opened up. I don't know if it's... I think it did open at the beginning of June. Don't quote me on the dates, but I know if it's not open already, it will open very soon. There was a sneak peek about two weeks ago. She has an exhibit at the um, National Museum of African American, Smithsonian of African American History here in D.C. If you're out, if you are from outside of the D.C. area, if you're inside the D.C. area, you know the museum opened up about two years ago and people were selling their firstborn child to get a ticket. Like, it was hard. The Smithsonian is free. However, for the more popular museums, you need the tickets to get in. Like, the um, the Holocaust Museum is free, but you need tickets to get in. Um, and this one was one of the ones, because one, because it was new. But two, because we as a people have been so thirsty for this representation of ourselves. And if you haven't been... If you live in the area and you haven't been, you need to go. If you live from outside of the area and you are planning a trip to D.C., you need to get tickets and you need to go. Matter of fact, James Caldwell, when you come to D.C., we going. And I am I could call him and tell him that, but it's on my mind, so I got to remember to say it. But she has an exhibit basically um, cataloging and highlighting her remarkable career in media. And the curator of the um, museum, um, you've seen him a lot in interviews, especially with the popularity when the museum first opened. Um, from my understanding, has done a great job. Now, I haven't been there to see it. I've been to the museum since it's opened. Matter of fact, I've been a few times because you can't do it in a day. It is that much, but it is so well done. It is so good. It's so good. And now you can go. You, you don't really... More days, I'm sure some days are more popular than others, but most days you can just go and get a ticket. Um, you can go get same-day tickets, and it doesn't really sell out. Like, before same-day tickets, you had to be there like 6 o'clock in the morning and stand in line. Now, you could show up and probably get a time stamp. Like, at the Holocaust Museum, that's what it is. You, If you show up at 8 o'clock and they're full, you might not get a time until like 10.30. But your ticket will have a time stamp on it. But go. Go for the whole museum, but definitely go to check out Mama O, because I am. I'm going to check me out some Mama O. I love Mama O. Mama O be cracking me up. Shoot. I stayed with Weight Watchers because of Mama O. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, I have quit again. But Mama O got me there. All right. Tia Mari, gonna, I got a few more, and then we're going to be done. Tia Mari, Tia Marie, her restraining order against 50 Cent has been um, denied. So here's the thing. I do remember that, you know, I think I talked about the fact that she had to re- that she had to restrain order against Fifty Cent for her for him posting that her sex tape on his Instagram, and he deleted it or they deleted it for him. And pardon my ignorance. So those of you who've had restraining orders, or you know your lawyers, or you are very familiar with the restraining order process, please drop it in my comments. I thought a restraining order was was, was physical things like to stay within a hundred feet or to not. Be physically around somebody. 
can you get a restraining order to to get somebody to refrain from posting things? I thought that would be more like a cease and desist type situation. I don't know. But the judge didn't know either because the judge threw it out. Now, what 50 Cent did was still some bullshit. I just think that the restraining order wasn't the proper remedy for what she really wanted from him. I don't know. But certainly, um, and a local court probably wouldn't want to press charges. But certainly, you may want to look at revenge porn type situation. You want to look at... Um, uploading unauthorized pornographic again i'm no lawyer so i don't know what the law would say but there may be a remedy that i just don't believe that that was ever the correct remedy for you Lil scrappy was in a really bad car accident if you follow on social media you saw him posting from the hospital and you saw um bambi posting and mama d and stuff like that and i didn't know all the ins and outs but now i know he was leaving the script club because that's how scrappy would say it script club with his friend Casino Royale, Casino spelled with an S, uh, with a dollar sign S, I mean, Royale. Um, and they got into a car accident. Now, what they're saying is that Scrappy fell asleep at the wheel. And they were in a really bad car accident. And Scrappy, I could definitely tell that something happened with his with his leg or his ankle. And he's had surgery since the, um, since the, um, the accident. But then we also saw... Where his friend, Casino Royale, has had it, like, was worse off than him. He was in ICU. He's had a couple of really major surgeries. Well, come to find out, he's now suing for medical, for the, for his, excuse me, for his medical bills. Now, some people are making the distinction that he's not suing Scrappy, he's suing the insurance company. Here's the thing, though. You're suing the insurance company, but what's going to, but y'all know, like I know, that's still going to end up hitting Scrappy. Either his insurance company is going to drop him or his premiums are going to go up. And I, I know that Scrappy may not have that kind of money to pay your insurance, pay your hospital bills. So I'm not mad at you for taking care of yourself and making sure that your situation is handled. However, comma, I don't know. I think that maybe. You might have let some time lapse. I'm sure that every Tom, Dick, and Harry ambulance chaser was up in your face and calling you and in your whole hospital room and all of that and got in your head. But if y'all really were truly friends and both of y'all are still in the hospital, both of y'all are going through this process, the statute of limitations ain't two days. Like, you have time to still sue if that's what you need to do. I don't know. If he really is your friend, y'all tell me. Drop it in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all think. If that really was his friend, is he wrong? Should he have waited or not? Y'all let me know. I think I would have waited. I'm not saying I wouldn't have eventually sued, but I think I definitely would have waited to find out the full extent of my injuries, what the long-term, short-term would be, and talk to Scrappy about it. And he may have, and Scrap might have been like, do what you got to do, player. Like, I don't know. But I know that that's, those are the steps that I would take. And that doesn't mean that I would not eventually sue. But that means that I would definitely pursue all avenues first. Quick story, because I ain't mean to run this long. And I know I'll be telling y'all my personal business all the time. But I was in a really bad accident in high school. I was driving. And I had two of my really good girlfriends in the car with me. I had only had my driver's license a couple of months. And the accident was my fault. It was absolutely my fault. I didn't... Well, an accident is just that. It's an accident. I didn't mean for it to happen. And I remember one of my girlfriends... Uh, matter of fact, she just texted me uh, earlier. She just texted me yesterday about to ask me about something. But anyway... So we're still friends. <laughs> um, she actually had to be airlifted to the hospital. Because she actually had a neck injury. And they wanted to... you know, So they didn't want to move her. So they airlifted her to, her to the, to the um, nearest hospital. And I remember my parents being really concerned about her mother suing suing us you know for her medical for the same situation and I remember the day my mother told me she's not going to sue us and I just remember to this day that is something that I've always been grateful for to her mom for her mother not pursuing that for her mother saying you know what y'all were young I know you didn't mean it I know that you and my daughter are friends and I don't have to sue because she could have you know I'm about to get emotional because it really it hits me every time I think about 
what she did. We live in such a litigious society and people are always quick to sue. It could have went a whole different way. Anyway, last but not least, real quick, Jamie Foxx is now suing... Whew. Sorry, y'all. Jamie Foxx is now suing the young lady that has accused him of slapping her upside her face with his genitalia 16 years ago. So, here's the, the whole Me Too movement backlash piece that we've talked about on the podcast. I don't know if Jamie did it or not. And I'm not saying that if Jamie did it, he was, he was wrong if he did it, right? But it was 16 years ago. And... We're not talking about a sexual assault. We're not. Well, I guess I guess that is a sexual that is a sexual assault. I shouldn't say that. <sighs> See, I don't want to come off sounding insensitive, but I think that that's a situation where it's been sixteen years, and unless something has happened that would cause you to bring your story up now, because my question is, what do you want from him? Nobody's going. No DA is going to is going to file charges. No DA is going to do that. Unless there's a history, like with, with the situation with Bill Cosby, unless they find that there's a pattern in their history that they can prove, no DA is going to take that case and say, Jamie Foxx, from 16 years ago, you assaulted this woman. So, but, Jamie Foxx is saying that she lied and he's pursuing um, a legal remedy against her anyway. So that'll be interesting. Here's the thing, you know, why would he bother with it if... If it were true and it was so long ago, why would he even bother with it? But then the flip side is, why wouldn't he? If you know, if people can be arrogant to a certain extent and feel like, you know what, I'm going to fight it because I know nothing's going to happen to me. Like I, I'm Jamie Fox, bitch. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying Jamie Fox is arrogant. I don't know that man from a hole in the wall. I'm just saying that some people, some people pursue situations even when they know they're lying because they think nobody's going to believe the other person. So. I don't think his legal action is going to go anywhere. And certainly I don't think nothing. She's not going to be able to get anything out of him. I just think it's a, it's just something to, to, to throw salt and throw mud on his name, to be honest with you. Last but not least, something I forgot to put in my RuPaul review last night. I get so mad, y'all, because I write my notes down. But then I get talking and I remember what happens. And so I forget to always look at my notes. But the one thing I wanted to say, and it was funny because I talked to... I just said James Carbo's name three times this when <laughs> doing this thing, but I talked to him um, the other day, so I guess that's why he's on my mind. On the James um, on the RuPaul review last night, Asia said, "No matter what happens, the real winner of season ten is Vanjie." And I remember thinking. James Caldwell said that, and she's absolutely correct. Because no matter what, if you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, if you don't remember nothing else and you don't know nothing else, you know Miss Vanji. Vanji. Matter of fact, she does have t-shirts, and I am ordering one, bitch. Anyway, that's my Friday night roundup. I hope y'all have a great week and a great Father's Day, and I will see you. Well, you're going to see an American Woman uh, review drop at some point. And then I have an interview for my podcast tomorrow, and that'll drop some point this weekend. So that's, that's what y'all are going to see. So y'all have a good weekend, and I will talk to y'all later.